Um, in the following sessions, I will dive deep into um, the product details and also how QLC allows our customer to achieve those benefits. My name is Yu Yan. I'm a, a product marketing manager at Solidan for QLC products. So uh, this, uh, so today's data center, uh, one profile of endurance and capacity is not enough to address all the needs. And as a result, in the past few years, we have seen a growing demand of QLC in the data center. Um, today, QLC still takes about TLC still takes about over eighty percent of the market share of solid state, uh, solid state drives. But uh, we see QLC is growing and have a great port potential. Um, as you can see here, um, Solidarm have both TLC and QLC product offerings. The TLC family, we call it standard endurance or uh, medium endurance, consists of the one DLPD and three DLPD products. And for QLC, um, we have to address the, uh, the market of the lower endurance, uh, we have both essential endurance and value endurance. Um, so how do, we, how do you compare uh, these uh, three products? First of all, on the performance, there are four performance corners usually we use to ca categorize a SSD, the sequential write, sequential read, random read, random writes. Um, the biggest difference between a floating gate, QLC and TLC SSD is on the random write performance. Sequence, uh, for the um, TLC drives, typically for the PCIe Gen 4 um, uh, platform, you are, uh, you are able to get about 200 K Alps uh, random write performance. For QLC, you will, will reach about half of that, 100 K IOPS. Uh, that's, you know, that's on the sequ uh, random write performance. For the rest of the three, uh, the three corners, sequential read, random read, and sequential write, TLC and QLC are pretty close to each other. So, for random um, read, um, both TLC and QLC can give you about 1 million IOPS, up to 1 million IOPS in a PCIe Gen 4 platform. For a sequential write, um, QLC drive is about 3 to 3.5 gigabyte per second for Gen, Gen 4 platform, and TLC is about 4 uh, gigabyte per second. That's you know very close, and for the sequential read performance, both of this TLC and QLC can give you about seven gigabyte per second. So um, what does that mean? Uh, that means for applications that are very read intensive, or they are mostly writing sequentially to the drive, or is just like don't care about too much about the random performance. QLC allow them to achieve a more cost efficiency with little compromise to the performance. Can I ask a, a quick question of here? Course. You're, you're talking about this as being SSDs rather than just the underlying technology. Is this taking into account any wear leveling algorithms in the firmware? These, these performance numbers? The performance, definitely, yes. Okay, so it, it, it's taking into account what the firmware does as well. Yeah, okay, exactly. thanks. Yeah. That's the you know the ultimate when you run write randomly into the drive. That's the uh, uh, endurance yeah. you will be able to get. Okay, yeah, I, I just want to make sure that. Yeah. Okay, thanks. Uh, no problem. So um, when you look at uh, so I talk about you know, the PCIe interface just now. I haven't talked about SATA interface. So mm -hmm. for a TLC-based SATA SSD, um, you know, it's capped, the performance capped by the interface. So at maximum, you can get about like 500 megabyte per second. So we are talking about 10 times of that of performance over here for read. And not to mention the dollar per gigabyte cost uh, for TLC SATA-based SSD 
It's not necessarily cheaper. It's sometimes more expensive than QLC. Um, so next, um, I'd like to talk about uh, the capacity. QLC SSD, our target uh, is um, you know, large, high density. The capacity of our QLC uh, product family range from um, 3.84 terabyte all the way to 61.44 terabyte. Uh, this allows customer to access more data more rapidly. Um, it's very critical for application like machine learning, uh, which is mentioned by Charles earlier. And thirdly, on the cost, um, QLC, folk, uh, QLC um, it's means four bits per cell, per cell. TLC is three bits per cell. So naturally, QLC give you one more bits uh, on the same area, so it's give you 33% 30, 30, more area density. Um, that translates to about 25% uh, you know, cost saving on the NAND. And so, and in addition to that NAND cost saving, our value endurance, which is the lowest cost option you can find for QLC, give you extra savings on the DRAM by using course indirection. So that's, it's the lowest cost option you can find for read intensive uh, workload with QLC. Um, so you may ask, how do you choose between uh, essential endurance and value endurance? What's the difference, right? So there are three types of customer we think uh, will choose VE over uh, EE. First of all, the hyperscalers, you know, the Amazon, Microsoft, Facebook, they will want the max amount of cost saving and they have the capability and the motivation to, you know, to do the, to go the extra mile to, to get that cost saving. Second is uh, for customers who have good control over their file system and operating system, they can uh, coalesce or, you know, um, write uh, in a way that's more friendly to the, to the drive or more, you know, uh, large block size optimized way. And third is customer who have specific applications um, that, you know, it's very, you know, they want high density, really high density. And at the same time, their block size is bigger or they're mostly writing sequentially or it's re really rate intensive. They can go for, they will go for the value endurance SSE. For the rest of the customers, um, I'm talking about customer who is like um, a smaller CSP customers or ODMs who doesn't have much control over their workload or a customer who is thinking about making a transition to a hard disk drive to a, um, you know, a NVMe based solid state drive or they are trans transitioning from a SATA based TLC SSD and thinking about moving on to the NVMe based platforms. Um, as long as the application or the workload is not random write I.O. intensive, um, it's typically, it's very likely they will find the essential endurance QLC SSD a very good fit and give them a lot of cost savings. So in summary, uh, essential endurance is an easy dropping replacement for a broad customer base. Well, VE, uh, value endurance, gave you the max amount of cost savings. Um, so let's move on to endurance. Um, many of you uh, may have question or have uh, wonder about what's the endurance look like for QLC versus TLC. So let's address that elephant in the room. Um, I'm often asked this question, what is your uh, endurance for QLC drive? Uh, to answer that, first of all, it's about 3.5 DWPD. And some of, of them may think, okay, that means the drive will last half as long as before. No, that's not the case. That's a misconception. And I like to uh, explain that a little bit. Um, so why we use the idea or use this term DLPD, which, calls, which, uh, which means drive write per day, is because we are used to the idea that SSD is small. 
so that if we want to write to a drive, we may need to override the drive, you know, multiple times every day. Uh, give you example, if you need to write one terabyte to a drive every day, and um, the drive is 500 gigabyte, then you will need the drive to be two DWPD, two drive writes per day, so you can write twice to the drive. However, the SSD size have grown so much in the past few years. Think about you know, how much uh, SSD you have in your laptop 10 years ago or 15 years ago, compare what you have here now. So the SSD has grown so much bigger and the DWPD is not as relevant anymore. Um, so for our QLC data center SSD, our average size is about uh, 15 to 30 terabyte drives. And you know, there's very little applications will write to a single drive uh, every day of 15 terabyte or 30 terabyte of data. It's very rare. So what does that mean? Right? That means as SSC grow bigger and bigger, there will be more application will need a lower endurance, like lower DWPD, where QL and there will be more applications QLC can serve uh, perfectly. So if you look at this picture here, you will see 85% of worldwide data center SSD is shipped less than one DWPD today. And 99% of system use at most 15% of the reading life of their drives. Think about that for a little bit. And also, I'd like to do a comparison. If you look on the right, um, how much data you can write to, to a drive. Um, the gray box is a hard disk drive, a 20 terabyte hard disk drive. You can re both read and write to the, to the drive um, in a, a, like 2.75 petabyte for the whole lifetime of the hard drive before you are breaking the uh, annual failure rate ratings that specified in their data, data sheet. Excuse me, I have a question. Of course. Yes, some vendors are now working on technologies like uh, computational storage. So they add chips that can perform, you know, some tasks directly in the drive. Mm -hmm. And many of them are, you know, the first application is compression, for example. So are you planning to add, because you know, these are huge drives, but actually, you know, with the compression engine, you could get even even more. Yeah, yeah, even more and use, you know, and have this, you know, um, uh, sorry, the, the, you know, use less flash in the end because you compress data before writing it, et cetera, et cetera. So do you have any plan to add this in the future? <laughs> So at Charles' side, I think you are very enthusiastic about computational storage. As Charles' side, we're definitely looking uh, at all the opportunities out there. And there's, um, you know, we are, there, I know there's quite a few players in the, uh, in the market already. And, you know, we're watching closely at that. As you, um, as you said, if you compress the data, you're able to achieve more efficient uh, storage space, right? Um, and with our technology advance, we can pretty much double the capacity, like the raw capacity, year uh, generation over generation. So it's already growing very fast. But on the other hand, yes, we are also looking at opportunity of like that. Okay, thank you. All right. So scaling wise, um, PLC also has three dimensional scale capability yep. besides bits per cell. Does QLC support multi-layers as well? Or, and what's your, what's your layer level today? Good question. Yes, uh, both TLC and QLC support multi-layers. Multi uh, I will tell you later what's a layer count, but uh, you know, right now is 144 layers and our next generation will have even more layer than that. All right, so um, 
Now I just talk about. And that includes floating gate as well as charge gate, charge trap. Floating gate, floating gate. It's the, the technology that's behind layer. this. I'm sorry, what? This is the 144 layer. Uh, right now is 100, yes, floating gate 144 right. layer. For the current generation, I'm going to announce the next generation <laughs> in a while. Just <laughs> wait a little, John. Just, just trying to be clear. <laughs> Don't steal or thunder. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so, okay, I have a brand teaser for you to test your uh, math scale. Um, uh, so, as you can see on the right, right, um, 30 terabyte QLC allows you to write 23 petabyte randomly to the drive over the five year lifetime. And 15 terabyte TLC allows you to write about 28 petabyte over the lifetime of the the drive. So you can see, you know, TLC and QLC give you plenty of writes over the lifetime. And, and sequential writes would be... This is random. I know, I know, but sequential writes would be significantly higher than that, Exactly, right? even better. You'll be able to probably write 100 petabyte for a 30 terabyte QLC if you write sequentially. Or if it's... Yeah, because you're not overwriting, yeah. Okay, now the print sheets are for you. <laughs> so, um, you know, a 4K radio, a 4K video um, is, uh, is about 50 megabyte per second uh, of data. So how much, how long do you think um, the video um, can be saved? How, how, how much video do you think can be saved on the QLC drive? Lots. <laughs> That's a big number for a bot. Give me a number. How long? Like how many days? How many minutes? How many? A sustained write. Um, yeah. Or just sitting there. Just keep writing. Come rep oh repeatedly writing. How many megabytes can be written to this drive? Four K to a drive. I probably put it at eight hundred hours before the drive dies. If you just write to it, I'm guessing. More important. Eight hundred hours. Any better guessing? It's way more than that. It's. Uh... I mean, the thing will hold raw a thousand minutes. A thousand. It'll 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 hold a thousand minutes just based on the number you just gave me. Right. How about if you continue to overwrite? Yeah. So and hours? you're it's uh, so a thousand minutes times uh, another four thousand, so a long time. It's yeah. Four, <laughs> it's four million. That's a good guess. Yeah. Four million, right? About That's four, a good about guess. four million minutes. That's a really good guess. So if you translate it, drum roll, <laughs> if you translate it to years, is 14.5 years of video of nonstop. Right. Some sustained right. Wow. That's just random. If you do sequential, that's gonna be five times of that. Or four times of that. Or over like four to five times. That means like 70 years or so. Think about that scale. Okay. Like how much data you can write. See, now we need to break it back down into minutes. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have any much cheat sheet. So your your, thing, your thing was like 7.6 years when you your calculation, but then you multiply it by five, you're like 36 years. So Okay. Nice. Okay. So 70 years. How, how many <laughs> videos do you want to watch? All right. Next, um, I will move on to um, the... Uh, um, Okay, actually before that, let me talk about, so I think, you know, as we talk about like how much video you can write, you know, you have a perspective of what, you know, how big endurance this uh, large density drive have. I think, you know, there will be more and more applications that, you know, will be able to convert to this 0 0.5 DWPD with this high density uh, QLC SSD. That's what we, we think. So now let's move on to the QLC SSD portfolio. Um, someone asked me about the layer account. There you go. Um, we are ha we're announcing this fourth generation 192 layer QLC uh, portfolio. Uh, on the top is the essential endurance, where is the 4K indirection, which is a drop in replacement for any um, uh, storage solution you have today. And the second row is the value endurance is 16K uh, optimized, write optimized, 
and it's used for write intensive and the ultimate cost saving uh, scenarios. In terms of capacity, there are four capacity points for both of this drive. Uh, essential endurance start at 3.84 and go up to 30.72. Uh, the value endurance start from 7.68 and go all the way up to 61.44 terabyte. I think at the beginning, someone th saying, oh, we have 30 terabyte drive. We have even more, like we have 60 now, 61 in a single drive. And in terms of maximum uh, PBW, that's maximum petabyte return as a way of measuring endurance. The essential endurance allow you to write up to 32 petabytes in a single drive uh, with IU aligned um, uh, random writes. Um, value endurance allow you to write to 65 petabyte writes randomly uh, with IU aligned writes. And form factor wise, we have three form factors uh, for each. For essential endurance, we have E1.S, E3.S, and U.2. What is, what is IU aligned? IU aligned means, so for essential endurance is 4K, which you know, is very, um, you know, most of the SSD is 4K writes. For uh, value endurance is 16K IU, like you have to write in 16, a K uh, aligned writes to achieve the best performance. You can always write in smaller block, but the endurance and performance will be uh, impact a little bit. So the, the petabyte write changes based on whether you're aligned properly or not. Is that what yes? Saying? Yeah, exactly. So the best way to write to a drive is sequentially, as you all probably know. And the second best is to have a IU aligned rights to the drive. Hmm. And for the value endurance, there's three form factor as well, E1.L, E3.S, and U.2. E1.L is, you know, E1.L, E3.S, E1.S is all the so-called EDSF or ruler form factors. All right, let's look at performance. Um, you know, it's very exciting. Uh, the QLC always all perform what we think we can achieve. So this is a comparison between the fourth generation essential endurance SSC versus a, a entry level TLC SSD offered by a competitor versus a QLC charge trap QLC SSD um, offered by a competitor. Uh, on the top, the throughput or random uh, writes IOPS. As I said, random writes is not the strongest point of QLC. However, in this comparison, you see the uh, QLC random write performance still outperform some, you know, even TLC based solutions. Um, and in terms of uh, the uh, latency, uh, the shorter the better, of course. Uh, the uh, essential endurance, uh, first generation essential endurance QLC drive also outperform the entry level TLC SSD and also uh, the charge trap QLC SSD. It's pretty amazing. So, next one on the uh, random read, 64 random read performance. Similar to before, um, the uh, essential endurance SSD is uh, if able to give you about 100 KI ops, and that translates to 6.64 gigabyte per second. That outperforms the entry level, some entry level TLC SSD, and way above the charge trap QLC SSD. Uh, so these are essential. Um... The EE drive, yes. right? And you're saying that in both these cases, the latency is faster with the QLC floating gate fourth generation solution than yep. TLC. Yep. That's an entry level TLC. Oh, the entry level TLC. Yeah. But you're starting to get into 64K random read IOPS. Now you're starting to get into the world of Oracle and other database applications too can use that then because they have they have larger yeah. 
So that's why we think uh, essential endurance will have a broad application in the future. And the K versus S are just some random alphabet numbers that you or alphabet <laughs> characters you're using there. Are they are indic <laughs> indicative of particular vendors? We should surmise there. I'm just saying. Go ahead. I'm sorry. <laughs> you got to take a <laughs> Next. So at system level, when you put this large drive into a system, this is a reference architecture for 2U density optimized server with uh, E3.S and E3.L. Um, as mentioned earlier, uh, we have E3.S for both essential endurance and value endurance. Um, with a 30 terabyte essential endurance, uh, E3.S, you can fit maybe 44 E3.S over that chassis, that gives you 1.35 uh, petabyte in a 2U. 1.3 petabyte in 2U. Can you believe that? If you put 60 terabyte into that, that's 2.7 petabyte in 2U. What's your roadmap look like for drive sizes? Right now, I just mentioned we have up to 60 terabyte. 60? But yeah, the value of future. Yeah, just. In the past, the previous generation will have up to 30. Yeah. In the so future. Probably 120. It's just going to keep growing it will significantly keep growing. faster than hard drives ever did. Exactly. So. Yeah, go ahead. I was going to say, um, with that density, uh, how many BTUs of cooling do you need for 2U? I don't have an answer for that. Do you have an answer for that, Charles? Not, not for this. I don't know this particular config. All right. But just one quick add to the density comment, right? Think about the fact that this is with our fourth gen QLC. Right? Roger alluded to the fact that we have a PLC, a five bits per cell that we've demonstrated. All right. So, Yes, if you look at our past performance, 30 ter well, 15 terabyte, next gen 30 ter terabyte max, next gen 60 terabyte max, the math goes. But then yeah. you add the extra factor of, oh, we're not doing four anymore, we're not doing five. Right. And you can see how, as Yu Yang is saying, it lends itself to a lot more applications now because you have a whole lot less concern about when this is going to wear out. You just have so much more of it. Mm -hmm. You didn't. I don't have a direct answer to the cooling question, but at a system level, just to point something out, because EDSFF drives, the dyes are on both sides, so you're getting cooling from both sides. Mm. And because you can pack density so efficiently, um, actually the SNEA reference design that we're showing here, whoops, um, the SNEA reference design that we're showing here, you can see they've actually kind of taken advantage of that density efficiency and they've got cooling channels uh, built into it. So that's kind of something that you can't do with, uh, with legacy form factors. So better cooling at a drive level, because uh, of what I just said with EDSFF, and kind of more options at a system configuration level in terms of dedicated channels for cooling. Exactly. Thanks, uh, uh, Roger. Um, the EDSFF form factor is an SSD native form factor. So it's designed for SSD and it optimized for SSD. So it will achieve the best performance and cooling results with those kind of new form factors. And I have to mention, you know, because um, you asked about charge trap and floating gate, floating gate have a much better retention. And, there, and also the, you know, the mechanics of the NAND cells is designed in a way that's really good to have multiple, even more bits per cell. That's why we are on the leading edge of the game of more bits per cell and have larger and larger uh, highest density SSD uh, in the market. All right. So to uh, summarize, um, the fourth generation PCIe QLC allows you to have rapid access to more data more efficiently. Um, as shown earlier, um, this fourth generation QLC gave you better random read and sequential read performance than some entry-level, even TLC, even entry-level TLC SSDs. 
and way better performance for hard disk drive or SATA drive uh, for sure. More data, we, our density have grown or doubled generation over generation. Now, next generation, you will see a 61 terabyte drive. Uh, and more efficiently, we have all this kind of uh, form factors that SSC native uh, that allows you the maximum flexibility and capability to design your uh, uh, data center with, uh, uh, with all this new form factor. All right, to learn more about the, uh, our SolidDime data center SSDs, both TLC, QLC, you can scan that QR code and go to our website. And I have more links for you to learn more about SSD. There's a lot of very cool products, briefs, um, tools, and things uh, you can check out.